love of backcountry skiing explains David Gonzalez's infatuation with whitebark pines. A writer and photographer, he spends a lot of time beneath these ancient trees. But these forests are under attack. And that has the skier marshalling forces to fight back. Once the snow melts, he leads volunteers, called tree fighters, into the forests surrounding Yellowstone National Park. Hey Wally, check out ahead. There's this one surviving white bark over to our left. Gonzalez and Wally McFarlane, an expert in using photography and satellite imagery to map landscape scale problems such as this, have together launched this volunteer force called Tree Fight. It's a little like David taking on Goliath. Hey, Wally, I've got a snack for you here. We've got four bags of about 20 packets each, and we've got four staplers. And who's Goliath? It's a wonderfully terrible beetle. I mean, if yeah. you're a biologist, you have to have great respect for it. Scientists say climate change has opened the door to a mountain pine beetle invasion. Whitebarks live at the highest, harshest elevations in the northwestern United States and southwestern Canada. Extremely cold temperatures used to keep this native pest at lower elevations. Now these beetles are capitalizing on warmer temperatures, killing whitebarks at a staggering rate. This is a larva that's uh it's still a ways from being a beetle, but it's closer than most of what we've seen. Before these larvae become adults and fly off to invade a new tree, tree fighters put out packets of an insect pheromone called verbanone. The goal is to trick beetles into thinking these trees are occupied. After stapling on this no vacancy scent, they take a picture and log GPS coordinates to track the tree's survival. It's an experiment that could succeed or fail. But Gonzalez says what's important is getting citizens into the forest to see what's at stake. White barks produce nutritious seeds that feed grizzly bears, squirrels, and Clark's nutcrackers. These are the cones that the whole forest wants. Some scientists see great potential for citizens to help document these kinds of changes. There's no way that a handful of scientists can go out and collect all of the data that we need in order to understand our natural world. So there's specific cases where scientists really could use the help of citizens to collect and gather data in a way that will advance the scientific process. And climate change is one of those situations. And tree fight has caught the eye of the U.S. State Department, which recently highlighted this citizen force to show other countries that Americans care about climate change. For Assignment Earth, I'm Gary Stryker.